Hello, this is Michelle and welcome back to Mr. and Mrs. Walker's Designs. Um, as I stated in my last video, I said I would be back pretty soon to show you my very first junk journal that I made back in the summer of 2018 and show you just how um, I've been using it and I also want to, I guess, make this video a little um, journal with me type video as well. Uh, because there's some things I need to add to it. So, um, let's get started. Um, this little junk journal I made out of a food box and it's covered with fabric and some doily on the back and it's just got all kinds of dangles and little tabs and lace and all kinds of little pockets and places to write. And um, I was going to tell you how big it is. It's about the size of a 3 by 5 uh, index card. And so how I've been using it is I thought, well, since this is my first junk journal, I thought, you know, I'll just use it to document or record keep um, my junk journal processes and journey. Um, the ones that I have in mind to make, the ones I've already made, when they were finished, when they were started. Um, so that's what I've basically been doing along with, since I'm new to this community, um, I've been doing a lot of experimentation with dyeing papers and, um, making vellum out of regular paper, glimmer mist, uh, just all kinds of, uh, things that go along with the junk journal processes. And so that's what I wanted to document in here. And um, so when you open up the book, there's a tag tucked in here and I put that put just that on this little tag. It says this journal is for documenting journal supplies and ideas. And so I started it July 26th of 2018. And so what I've done so far is um, I did buy some alcohol ink. Um, or alcohol markers, and so I just did a swatch um, on one of the cards that I had included in here. It's just some uh, scrapbook paper, so I just did a little swatch to tuck in here so I would know what the colors look like on my markers. And then I, here I wrote down when I got them and pointing to that, that those are the colors. Um, and then I use them on the uh, the white paper flowers and butterflies that you can get at the Dollar Tree just to see how they would do. And so I put those in here. And then at that time, I wrote down what my next junk journals were going to be. And so um, the Wizard of Oz one I did. I uh, finished it in November. The Dear Julie Julie uh, Paris Journal. I need to write down when I finished it. I finished it on January um, the 17th of 19. So that's what I did on that page. And then I have a sample here of when I started dyeing papers and experimenting with that. Uh, on July 26th, I had some uh, cherries that were going bad, so I decided to see if they would make good dye. So um, I just wrote down my process for that, and, and then I put in a little sample with some washi of what that looked like, and I was really pleased with how that turned out. Um, there's just some ideas that I had for... Uh, Possibly making up some kits and things like that in the future. Uh, another list of possible bundles or kits that I'd like to make. Um, I also went and bought a set of metallic American Crafts ballpoint pens from Tuesday morning. So here is a sample of those. And then I also wrote in this Sharpie. It is a Sharpie pen. It is a uh, 0.8 millimeter. I got this at Dollar General and I absolutely love it. It does not bleed through and I love it. I just, I write a lot with it, not just in the junk journals. Um, 
this was that cheap glitter glue that you can get at the Dollar General or the Dollar Tree or whatever and it just took forever to dry and you see how it's water-based so you see how it made that I don't know if you see see how it made that outline and it just it's just it's just crap it really is so um I wrote that down in here in the you know a sad face and I think I ended up throwing that stuff away so it was just taking up space and I knew I wasn't going to use it again um, here's just a little sample of the outside uh, binding of the Parish uh, Dear, Julie, Dear Julie Julie Parish Journal. And when I put that on was uh, January the 5th. So I have that tucked in here. Um, here's a place where I can put some documentation. Um, ordered die cuts uh, from Wish. That was not a good experience. Um, some of you may have had some good experiences with them, but I did not. Uh, the product's fine. Um, the Christmas stamp set, I'm glad I ordered it in September or October. I don't even remember how I didn't write that down. I should have, um, but it didn't come until like right before Christmas. Um, and then I wrote down the ones that I received and um, they never got me one that I ordered, so they have to give me a credit. And it, it was just, it was a mess. So here's another spot I could do some journaling. Um, on the 4th of December, I did some experimentation with dyeing paper with turmeric. Uh, and I added gold eyeshadow to it, made an alcohol spray. Not too impressed with that. I will not work with turmeric again because it, the, the paper does not take it. Um, it does not get down into the fibers and then it gets everywhere and it stains everything. And I even went and bought a, like a fixative spray to spray on top and that didn't even work. So, um, I will not be using turmeric again. If you have any tricks of the trade with using turmeric for dyeing paper, I would appreciate put your comments down below because I would love to, um, to hear your your thoughts on that because I love the color of it but it's just it's just too messy to use um, so I did that I also made coffee spray uh, and I always add a little alcohol to it because it makes it dry faster and so I have that sitting here on my desk and um, also some other notes about some little embellishments and things that I made here's another spot for journaling um, I did the dollar store Christmas junk journal challenge with dear Julie Julie and Kara Brandon finished it on the 15th of December and um, this is where I documented that and I also have in here um, some of the samples of the vellum paper that I did and I'm going to show you that here in just a second um, what my thoughts are on that um yeah so on this other side made vellum out of plain copy paper with inkjet images on it color and black and white i did that on uh january 5th uh, and said that it's in the pocket on the other side of this and then here's a, another a bigger sample of that vellum paper made out of copy paper um, i love the way it looks it's you know it's semi transparent um but after um making it and like blotting it with paper or with what paper towel um blotting it with shop towel uh letting it sit for 24 hours in between paper shop towels i mean i tried everything it still leaves and i don't know if you can see this or not but it still leaves oil spots and I used baby oil and it le leaves oil spots on whatever it touches. So um, some people like this look. They don't care if it gets on other pages in their journals or whatever. I don't really care for it. To me, it just looks, I don't know, to me, I, I just don't like the way it looks. So, um, so yeah, this postcard's been sitting in a file folder with this paper now for I don't know a little over a month I guess and it just it just gets oil all over the place so I probably won't be doing that again I'll probably just try to 
print on parchment paper or deli paper, I don't know, something else that I can find. So that, those are just my thoughts on making the vellum paper. And I didn't really use that much oil either. So it just, again, it doesn't absorb into the fibers and stay there. It, it keeps, you know, letting oil, releases oil. So um, I don't think there's anything. I think that's as far as I got, as far as writing stuff down or ins inserting stuff in, in this journal. So um, I've done several things since then. I wrote down, let's see, I have a list over here, so I wrote down the date that I finished the Paris Journal um, in, towards the end of January, let me see, or it could have been first, of no, end of January, on January the 25th, uh, around about there, a couple days earlier than that, I took in um, a sewing machine that I inherited from my uh, great aunt, Margaret, and um it's about circa 1950. It's a white rotary. And um, I just, it, it was just sitting here basically, you, you know, in the way in my craft room because it's, it's in a big cabinet. I was using the drawers, but, and then I had like a bookcase on top of it. But I was like, you know, I really, this space could be used better. So I need to make a decision and either try to sell it or try to get it serviced and actually use it. Because personally, I have a newer Singer machine and I cannot stand that thing. Um, not for serious fabric sewing, I can't stand it. It's fine to do like for paper embellishments, things like that for junk journals, but for serious fabric sewing, I, I can't, can't stand it. So, and I had read on, um, I had gone on YouTube and, and looked this sewing machine up and there was a couple people that just, you know, guys that, that restore them and sell them said these are just the best machines. They're, you know, they're made out of steel. They're, they're workhorses. They're basically like an industrial machine in it. And I got it serviced and it sews beautifully. It sews, you know, so straight is <laughs> I, when it comes to cutting or sewing, I really have to be conscious of how straight I'm going. So, um, Anyway, I got it serviced for about $50, and um, I haven't actually made, um, I've just tested it out. I haven't made any projects on it, you know, big projects on it yet or anything, but when I do, I will definitely uh, show those off. So um, I did want to document that in here um, about doing that. So let's find a page, uh, or maybe just like in this card right here. Okay, so um, took white rotary machine in for service on, well, it was two days before that, so that would have been January 23rd, 2019. Okay. Um, all they had to do was just service it, and then they had also had to put a pulley on the motor because um, it it had got a bald spot on it, basically. Replaced motor pulley and serviced. Okay. Um... I'm just going to put on here so if anybody ever reads this, they will know I received. I have had this machine for over 20 years. Oh, and it's basically just been a piece of furniture. I've used it for a nightstand. I've used it for a TV stand. Um, I've used it for all kinds of things other than its initial purpose. I received this sewing machine and I believe it was in 19... Um... 1996, around 1996, when my great aunt passed away, um, from Aunt Margaret. I don't think she used it much because it's in such good shape. Okay. So I think that's all I'm going to put there. And then I'm going to 
um, I'm going to clip in somehow. Okay. Um, I'm a paper clip in my drawer here. So I'm just going to clip this receipt in so I'll have it with my documentation there. Okay, and so that's in there now. I can write something behind it if I want to, maybe. Um, I do have like a sample of how I adjusted the tension and all that, so uh, I forgot to pull that out. Um, I know it's over here with my machine somewhere. I will get that out and I will probably put that in here with this somehow. Okay, so let me check. Whoa, Sharpie on my hand. Okay, um, let me check that off the list. And I've shown you what I've done so far. So now all I really want to add to this is a little bit of documentation and I'll do that here um, about some dies that I experimented with. Um, let's see, that was, I believe that was last Monday. I'm just going to put the week of... That would have been, today's the 11th, that would have been the 4th, the week of February 4th, 2019. I experimented. So, you know, I put stamps and stuff in here for it to be pretty and, you know, to decorate it and all that. But don't be afraid to just right over that i mean you can still see it um just you know it's a junk journal it's a place to keep stuff uh either written down or uh, memorabilia or documentation like i'm doing um just fill it up you know that's what they're meant for um and i think it's great i think it's such a cool way of journaling things and it's fun finding the right page to put things on and um, tuck things into so don't be afraid to use your journals um, just you know go to town I mean there's a lot more things I want to experiment with I you know I hit the the sale at Hobby Lobby and bought some new distress inks and I uh, want to try those out and you know all kinds of things like that so that's all going to be added to this so I experimented with new dyeing oops techniques for paper and probably these could be used for cotton fabric you know plain cotton fabric like muslin or something like that as well um let's see i used let's see i used mixed berries in one experiment and i used onion purple onion skins purple onion skins and I used um, someone had given me a um, a single tea bag of hibiscus tea okay and so that's what I used um, and so here are the samples. This is actually on some parchment paper. This is the mixed berry on parchment paper. And I just loved how this came out. Um, so I used some of this in the, the uh, Dear Julie Julie Paris journal. So whoever wins that journal will be receiving a little bit of this in that journal. But it just, it's just, uh, I just love that sound. So I will be... Um, using this in future a future journal or a kit or something like that so i have this so i want to cut off a little bit of this oh, sorry for the reach um could have just torn it i guess but so i'm gonna cut off a little bit of that to put in here and i'm gonna write on it which one it is Get that out of the way. So this is the mixed berry paper. And this was just a frozen bag of berries that I had like from Walmart or whatever. Um, they had gotten freezer burned because I didn't eat all of them. It was, um, I believe it was strawberries, blackberries, and raspberries. And it just, it just 
resulted in this beautiful color. Okay, and so the next one is, um, this is the onion skins, the purple onion skins, and then on this end, um, some of the hibiscus tea got on this particular sheet here, but it, I love the way it, it came out anyway. Um, so this is the onion, the purple onion skins. So I'm going to cut off some of this. Right on here, purple. Onion skins. Okay, so there's that little sample. And then this is the hibiscus tea. And I thought, eh. When it first, when I first did it, I thought, oh, it's going to turn out look just like the berry and it's not going to, you know, be that big of a difference. And, but once it dried and then I put it in the oven and dried it and then I also ironed these papers, it just came out to be the prettiest, like, dusty purple color. And um, here lately I've been using like a turkey baster to get you know uh some of the dye onto the paper so this is what these lines are i just kind of went crazy with the turkey baster um so this is the hibiscus tea so i'm just gonna cut a little corner off of this i think i'm gonna try to get a little bit of that um line there see that looks really i love the way it's just in the corner right there Okay, so I'm going to put this aside, and then I'm going to write on here, hibiscus tea. Okay, so here are my three new um, paper dyeing experimentations and the samples. And so what I'll probably do is just... Um, I don't really have a pocket really close that I could put them in, so I'll probably just stick them down in here, um, or I'll probably just take, I'll just, you know, paper clip them in, and they can stick out from the top, that's okay. Um, let's see, here's a dangle, here's a dangle that I made for this journal, paper clip, and it really wasn't holding anything in, that tag is in that little tuck corner tuck spot so I'm going to use this dangle just to hold these in get back in frame better okay, so there we go there is all I think I'm all caught up now with the experimentations I've been doing um, so there are the latest things for this journal and I will keep going um, I have some things in mind for the future that I will probably that I will need to add in here so I will not forget what I've done and so that's what I am using this little journal for okay so if you have enjoyed this video and kind of watching how I use um, my first junk journal please give me a big thumbs up comment about uh, how you use your uh maybe do, do you still have your first junk journal have you filled it up what did you use it for are you still using it just you know let me know what you think about uh how i'm using mine and i would love to read your comments and uh, if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe to my channel um, i will have more videos coming up um we have had some really bad weather lately um it's a very gloomy day today but wednesday um we're supposed to have a beautiful day so i'm thinking about getting out on wednesday and doing some shopping at a to z and i think i'm going to try to do a shop with me video for that and i have some other videos in mind so um i hope you are having a great day and um may god bless you and yours every day thank you for watching bye to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful you and me 
we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. Step back.